This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar entitled Ask Larry Anything. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll explain that Thunderbolt, though very fast, still has speed limits, especially for video editing. And those speed limits vary depending upon what you are doing. Ed asked, I've heard that the speed of different Thunderbolt ports on the Mac Studio vary. Is this true? It's not just a Mac Studio, it's all Thunderbolt ports. Thunderbolt is a shared protocol. It shares its bandwidth between video for the monitor and data transfer. Monitor data has priority and there's a certain amount of reserve space for video traffic. One Thunderbolt controller on your Mac also shares bandwidth across two Thunderbolt ports. So if you've got two Thunderbolt ports, it means that you have a single controller. On the Mac Studio, we have four Thunderbolt ports, which means we have two controllers. Thunderbolt also shares bandwidth between all connected devices. Well, let's, let's illustrate what this means. If I have one controller and I have one device plugged in, data transfer, it's going to transfer data at the maximum speed, assuming the device supports it, of 2850 megabytes per second. If I plug in a second device, that bandwidth is now shared between the two devices, so it only, each only get half, assuming both are writing data at the same time. If it's only one and the other, they get full speed. But the bandwidth is shared between the two. If I have two controllers, then I've, and I've got one device plugged into controller one and one device plugged into controller two, they both get the maximum amount of data. This is the big benefit of multiple controllers. And multiple controllers are also recommended when you need lots of data bandwidth and a large monitor. That gets me to the right-hand table. Video data to the monitor always has priority over data traffic. If I plug in one 4K monitor, it requires 16 gigabits per second of data for a 4K monitor. And because Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 have a 40 gigabit limit, that's the speed that it transfers, 40 minus 16, leaves roughly 24 gigabits per second for data. But if I plug in two 4K monitors, that data bandwidth drops to only 8 gigabits a second. Because video data takes priority over digital data. If I plug in a 5K monitor, that requires 28 gigabits per second, leaving 12 gigabits per second for data bandwidth. If I plug in a 6K monitor, that's 36 gigabits per second, leaving only 3 gigabits per second for data. So the larger the monitor size plugged into a controller, the less of that controller's bandwidth is available for data. This is the reason why the Mac Studio has two controllers and why it's able to support larger monitors. Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 have a maximum data bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, which is shared between the monitor and data. The monitor takes priority, which means that our data, even if we have an SSD plugged in, there isn't the bandwidth in the Thunderbolt pipe to support full data transfer and a 5K monitor. The codecs that we pick also change our performance needs. Just as an example, because there's dozens of codecs and all kinds of configurations, I decided to see what kind of data transfer rates we're going to need based upon some different codecs. All of these are working at 4K images, 24 frames a second, and let's say that we're doing multicam work or we're editing standard video. Editing standard video, you should assume, is two streams, the stream you're playing and the stream that you're about to play. So a good way to budget bandwidth for pure single camera shooting, not multicam, is to assume two streams. For multicam, the number of streams that you're shooting. ProRes proxy ranges from 18 to 109 megabytes per second, depending upon the number of streams you're playing at once. ProRes 4 to 2 is between 60 and 350 megabytes a second. ProRes 4 by 4 is 130 to 800 megabytes per second. And Airy Raw, I just threw that in because more films are shot on Alexas than any other camera. 
and Airy Raw is a good format for shooting because it gives you the maximum color grading flexibility. This assumes a, a 4K picture, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 24 frames a second, 360 megabytes for single stream and 720 for a dual stream. And again, assume 720 when you're editing single camera work. <laughs> you would never use Airy Raw for multicam, so that's why it says not available. The yellow box indicates that data transfer rate, which is faster than a single hard drive can support, or for that matter, faster than a single one gig server can support. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But there's more to the story. Most RAIDs that were used for video editing don't fill a Thunderbolt pipe. For instance, no hard drive system, HDD stands for spinning media or hard drives, no HDD RAID 0 system containing less than 8 drives will fill a Thunderbolt 2 pipe, much less Thunderbolt 3 or 4. Thunderbolt 2 has a maximum data transfer rate of 1,250 megabytes a second. The remainder of the pipe is devoted to monitors. Two hard drives transfers data at about 300 megabytes a second, assuming 150 megabytes per drive. Spinning media can be as little as 100 megabytes, can be as much as 220 megabytes. I picked a number in the middle. If the drive is empty, it's faster. If the drive is full, it's slower. If the files are larger, it's faster. If the files are smaller, it's slower. So there's a lot of things that determine the speed of a spinning media. So 150 megabytes a second is a good plug number to use. If you have four hard drives in your RAID, 600 megabytes a second. Six hard drives, 900 megabytes a second, and eight drives, 1,200. Even with eight drives, I can just barely hit the maximum data transfer rate of Thunderbolt 2. Eight drives doesn't begin to fill a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 pipe. However, that's assuming that these RAIDs are all formatted as RAID 0. The problem with RAID 0 is, although it's fast, you run the risk of losing all of your data if either one of those hard drives crashes. So I recommend instead that a hard drive RAID be formatted as RAID 5, which reduces the speed of the drive and the capacity by the speed and storage of one drive. This was an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. For the complete version of this training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 342. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99, almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.